the top university in the country when it comes to the Masters of Business Administration, the MBA course, the University of Sydney asked me to do a guest lecture for their 2019 MBA students. And of course, I accepted in a heartbeat, revealing to them my secret source of how, as a social media expert and consultant for many brands and businesses across the health industry, consumer industries, service-based businesses, and anything in between, how I create endless social content that helps a brand fulfill on the goals they set out to achieve on social media. A channel with the best cost efficiency, a widespread audience, and a marketing channel with the lowest barriers to entry. You just log into your favorite social channel and you have access to your customers and to raving fans right there. All you have to do is put out content and connect with them. So let's discuss how to create social content for your business. That's exactly today's episode. Hello and welcome to the PhD in Social Media podcast. I'm your host, Lauren Papandoni. Join me on my journey to learn social media marketing inside out and together we'll each try to earn our own figurative PhD in social media so we can all do great social media marketing. Alrighty, thank you for being here today because I'm about to share my favorite clips from my exact lecture that I gave in 2019 to the MBA students at the University of Sydney. So I was asked to do a guest lecture there and these are my exact favorite bits that should give you the fastest way uh, to getting social insights without watching the full lecture. But of course, I'm also going to show you where to get the full lecture. That is at www.go.insideoutdigital.com.au forward slash opt in and it should appear on the YouTube channel and also on the podcast within the show notes. So just check that out. Um, It should appear right on the screen. Okay, so uh, let's dive in. So uh, here's my first uh, insight from from the lecture that I absolutely love and I think uh, you would like to hear it too. So here it goes. What is social content, right? So it's, it's, it's pretty simple. It's pretty much content is what brands communicate. Social media content is what brands communicate on social media then. So if what brands say is their content, um, uh, then what is content on social media is what brands say on social media. Now, if we jump across to the right-hand side, you've got what brands say and what customers actually care about. And the interaction between the two is content marketing. Why? Because what brands say could be always talking about themselves, but customers won't care about it unless it's relevant to them. So the interaction between the two is known as content marketing. And usually within content marketing, and in fact, effective content marketing actually follows up with using that content to achieve a marketing goal. Okay, so that's where we sit inside here. Now, content marketing can be split up um, in a, into a couple of different uh, pieces because you've got a different channel mix depending on what your strategy is. So within this content marketing, you could have your Facebook content, you could have some website content, you could have some PR and, and media pieces, you might have some Google AdWords there, the thin yellow line, and you might also have your traditional or print media pieces depending on um, what it is that you're advertising or marketing, whatever the brand is. Okay, so let's take this diagram here and where exactly would your social media strategy fit? Well, it would cover the brand communications that are part of um, your content marketing that are on, only pertain to social media. So before we said this was our Facebook content, so this is exactly where our social media strategy would fit. Now your social media strategy should ladder back up to your digital marketing strategy, which encompasses all digital communications. And even further to that, to include uh, those last pieces of print material in the bottom here, you've also got your communication strategy, which encompasses the whole thing. Notice how these circles are concentric and they actually relate to each other. They're not uh, in different places and social media sits over to the side where uh, the the intern sits and just the intern manages social because you know they were born in the 90s and they can handle that kind of thing. Social media, if it's to be powerful for your business, needs to sit within the communications matrix and within that environment. So um, social media content is what brands communicate on social media platforms and it has to be relevant to what customers want. All 
right. I uh, hope you like that one. We're now going to roll into the next insight from the lecture that I really like. Here it is. So who actually follows a brand that they like on social media, right? It might be Ferrari or maybe it's Adidas, right? And why do we follow these brands? It's because they post cool cars or they post stuff about fitness and we care about these things. Now, if you don't care about these brands, that isn't to say that, that content marketing doesn't work on you. It just means you're probably not the audiences of these two brands, but you are definitely part of the audience of other brands that actually interest you. So let's take a deeper dive into this. So a brand, and just now looking at Adidas, a brand will use content in exchange, they will give you value and they will gain your attention and that will fulfill a marketing goal. Now, before we look at Adidas here, that marketing goal could be anything from sales to white paper downloads, to client acquisition for your media agency, to um, buying a new home in the suburbs, to seeing more people enter a GP office or something else more particular. It can be anything in the raft of whatever business you are in. So let's have a look about um, at Adidas about how they get from content a content pillar or a type of content post and take that all the way through to fulfilling their marketing goal on the end. Okay, so we've got one type of post here that we can isolate on the Adidas page and that's a product post. So here it is with um, possibly the new Ultra Boost or whatever it might be for Adidas and then they take that through. So they've got the content um, pillar post here then the value exchange that they're giving off to the consumer is that they're alerting them and saying, hey, there's a sale or there's a discount or offering them something new or simply offering them information and entertainment in the fact that they're showing them that there's a new product here. And that is that it's the, the new line of Ultra Boost or whatever it is for the Adidas brand. And off the back of that, while offering the customer value, the brand in turn receives back attention of the user and that translates into sales of the shoes and or clothes or whatever it is they might be doing. Let's take a look at another one. So let's for a second imagine that this is an influencer post of a football star, right? So they're using influencers um, in terms of the content pillar type that, they, that they're posting. So they're posting about um, a recent sports star or whatever it might be. And that is giving the user value in, the, in terms of entertainment. For that entertainment, they're giving you their attention and that attention translates into sales of the shoes and clothes. And again, this last one here, say, let's say this is a fitness inspiration type post, right? That one is obviously inspiring or entertaining the user. And in turn, that attention is turning to, oh, I might buy the shoes that are on um, that athlete or whatever it is, um, or the clothes or whatever it might be. So you're trading value to the user, attention to the business, and that is translating into a marketing goal. Okay, so let's have a look. So uh, e-commerce is, is obviously an easier one to kind of track because you can sell Adidas clothes online. It's very easy. You're going from social to web uh, and then purchase on the website. But what if you're not e-commerce? Then it's it's still the same. So here's Marvel, a real non-traditional uh, example of a business. And Marvel on Facebook have 32 million followers, right? And what they're doing is using content in the form of sneak peeks of the, the new movie or um, a little illustration on this one here. They're talking about the comics over here. Uh, they're doing interviews with the characters and basically they're using their social media channel to fulfill their goal, to get more sales of their movies. But it isn't at all tied to Facebook. It's tied to every single cinema in which their movies are playing or um, on, on streaming services or wherever else you can buy the physical or um, soft copies of the movies and all the additional merchandise. Okay, um, on the right hand side here, we have the YouTube channel for PlayStation. Again, a very non-traditional example, but they're using content, um, say sneak peeks of the games or whatever it might be, interviews or um, even little challenges or reveals about what's in each of their games to sell more of their games and movies. And 
Um, PlayStation here, this is really powerful because they have 8.8 .8 million subscribers and 2 billion views. Now, I want to kind of alert you to the fact that 2 billion views, what would that actually be worth on traditional or TV advertising? Um, PlayStation are actually achieving this through both organic and paid uh, social media use, and this could not have been translated to TV advertising because it would have cost them way too much to be in, in that space, even given that PlayStation is a huge huge brand and they would actually be using TV advertising as well social media has added to their content marketing mix and added to the power of their content marketing okay so let's have a look at two more everyday examples because not everyone is Marvel and PlayStation right so here's big W Australia this is their uh, Instagram page. They are simply showing the, the products in which they sell in fun and interesting ways and pushing that through in content to achieve the goal to get more sales of their clothing and homewares, right? Now here's Coles, a super everyday example. They literally sell groceries, okay? So what they're doing is to get more sales of their groceries, um, more footfall or specifically to steal it from their competitors. So the more people they get in store at Coles, the less people they have in Woolworths. Okay, so let's take a deeper dive into Coles here, right? So just to prove the point even further here, we've got the content pillar from Coles is that they're doing easy dinners, desserts, or recipes, right? This is this is the, the content pillar that they can then emulate for the rest of the year. They can post one of these every single day because that's a content idea that can be easily replicated over and over and over again for content on social media. The value that is always embedded in one of these posts is inspiration and how-tos and time savings or maybe cost savings to the customer. Now, this is the value that they give off and they're in turn trading that for attention to their brand, not to Woolworths, not to anybody else. We're getting the attention of the user and that is then translating into a marketing goal in terms of sales, in terms of footfall over Woolworths. Um, and that's exactly the, the social media strategy of Coles right there. All right, and my third choice in clip and insight is how to create endless content for your brand. Let's dive right in and I'll share it from the, from the lecture. Here we go. So how do you develop social content for any brand and do it right, right? So we've done the what and we've done the why. Now the only thing that's left is how to do social content and doing it so that your content is strategically placed and continues to be that vehicle that does drive your business from that point A to point B. Okay, so there are five things to consider. They are the idea and the story, the audience, the market, the channel, and the format. Okay, so the idea of the story, what's the message you're sharing? What's the story or part of the story? This is like, you know, what is the post going to be about? And you can do this by brainstorming out a couple of different ideas. And I'm going to show you how to do that after this segment right here. So you need to think about the idea of the story. And next, you'll need to think about what, is, what do the audience actually care about? What do they need? What do they like? What are they already sharing? Or what are they not sharing? You know, is there a gap there for the audience? Uh, do you need to run a survey now to find out what your audience actually care about in terms of your category? Okay, um, let's look at the market then. What are your competitors doing? What are your competitors not doing? Should you emulate it? Is it a good thing? Or should you avoid it and find your own gap? Uh, create your own space right there and do something different with your content. You know, what does the market know? Does the market know you? Does the market know your product? Or is there education needed? So these are the kind of things you need to figure out uh, in market and to also consider when doing content. And then you've also got channel. So what's the channel etiquette? What's the norm? Or like, what do people usually do on the channel? What do users like on the channel? And what do they not like on the channel? And what's working well and what isn't working well on that channel? Like, it isn't gonna be right to try and uh, repost your article post onto, say, a channel like Snapchat, which is more focused on video and short form pieces. Okay, uh, and then format, you know, could this be a video? Is it a video series? Is there a reveal at the end? You know, is this a podcast? Is this a Q&A? Is it an Instagram story? Is it a Facebook Live? Is it an interview on LinkedIn? Does it involve emoji, an emoji? Does it involve a GIF, a poll, a prize, a call out to the audience? There's so much in this. How can you use format to really boost what you're saying and what your message is out to a large audience? Because 
you're offering value and being entertaining. Now, uh, in in all of that and considering all of that, I'd actually like to bring you back to, um, I'd like to introduce you to what I like to call the boring tile. So the boring tile represents the business that thinks they're boring or maybe doesn't have too much to say or doesn't have too much to showcase. They've got maybe a single product or they're not willing to be on camera or whatever it is that restricts a brand um, in having content and being able to really nail this content marketing piece is that um, they are lacking a little bit of creativity or at least the challenge to, to say, okay, all we need is creativity to create good content. So the boring tile for me represents that business. And I wanted to show you how you could take uh, just three words and a red background and make that into very different content content pieces that could be used for content marketing um, just by using this small amount of information, right? A very shallow amount of information. So, I mean, it could be taken to a carousel. So here you'd have the and then boring on the next tile and then um, tile on the last one. So it'd be the boring tile. And that way your users can interact with it. So could you do something like that for your brand? This could involve, you know, three simple images of the same product in different um, environments or whatever it is. So you can create that into a carousel. Could you create it into a video? Here's something that I whipped up in about five minutes. So this is a slideshow. Could you create three image posts into a video? And all of a sudden you've gone from only having image content in your brand to now having video content. Here's another way you could present the exact same information in another little video, completely different to the last. Now, I'm not saying these are, these are very interesting. These are just above boring, but these actually represent how you can use a small amount of information about a single given brand and actually take that through to being something more creative, which allows you then to post and talk about your brand, offer value and gain attention for that exchange and achieve your marketing goal off the back of that. And that's exactly content marketing. Okay, so now, now we're at a place where I'm ready to share my content marketing formula. So how do you create endless content that is actually strategically placed? So it's not always about just, you know, changing up the format or pushing it onto a new channel and resharing and saying the exact same thing about your business. You need to consider not only your business and your brand message, but also the market and the audience that you're talking to overlay that with what channel you're actually going to be on what format is there and then really in big bold words write this on your desk you know value really needs to be shared each and every time you are going ahead and posting content right so here's how we would do this we would we would put these three circles down and in the interaction between what the brand is saying what the market is doing or not doing, if there's a gap or uh, something like that, and the what the audience actually cares about, in the interaction between those three is actually where the gold is for your content, right? So we should be uh, mapping the three of these out and mapping things to do with your brand, your market, and your audience out onto the one page, and then using each of these three areas of um, ideas and molding that into content by picking and choosing a piece from brand, something that aligns with the market and something that aligns with the audience. And if you hit each of these three pillars, then you will have uh, the ability to create endless content for your brand um, with with ease, mind you, and, will, and it will also be strategically placed. That is that it will have a purpose for being. So I mean, posting content is not just about posting anything of value because I've spoken a lot about value, but let's say for my agency that I post, you know, 100 cat videos, right? Now that could be very valuable and entertaining to some people, but would my audience actually care about that? And would it be strategically placed? Would it gain me a single client in my social media marketing agency to have multiple cat videos? Probably not, but if I took the time 
and built, say, uh, something educational or, you know, your top 10 uh, best practices for social media content and use that as my content. Well, now that's to do with my brand. That's what my market is either already doing or wants me to do. And that's what my audience needs and would find valuable. And therefore, then I take that idea and put that into, okay, which channel would that suit and what format would that suit or vice versa, mixing up the format to fit a channel and making sure that that is fully loaded with value and that is good content and I'm going to show you now how to walk through this process um, and exactly what I do so this is known as a BMA analysis and it helps derive content for your brand that is strategically placed so in the brand section you want to know what does your brand offer what is your product you know what is your USP or features or benefits um, and all the different things that come under either the product variants you know anything to do with the colors the flavors anything like that to do with your brand you write those all down in this BMA analysis then you've got the market what does the market already do you know is there a gap for your content or um, what does the market not do can you can you find a gap yourself and start doing content that is completely different to your competitors and therefore is more what the audience actually would watch or would care about or would like or whatever it is and then you've got the audience so what does the consumer like what do they enjoy on social media what formats or channels are they on um, and you know what kind of value would they like to receive what do they want education do they want time savers money savers free stuff competitions entertainment free tools whatever it might be have a think about it but also research each one of these areas um, so that you can mind map this all out and come to this great mind map that you can then use and pick and choose each piece to make content out out of the back of so Okay, so that seems all a little high up, but we're going to walk through it with an example. So um, let's apply this for Volkswagen, right? So this is their Golf GTI. Okay, let's, let's kind of step through this and it's going to become really clear as to how to use one of these um, to create endless content for your brand. So you've got the Golf GTI and mind you, my disclaimer here is that I haven't actually studied Volkswagen. Um, I've never worked on the brand and I decided to use it because I wanted to give it a fresh head without having looked at any brand documentation. But uh, what you should do is have a look at your brand documentation, go to your market and study your competitors and study, uh, you know, what the differences are between what you're doing and what they're doing and if there's any gap and also look at the audience you know go out and talk to people between 20 and 35 years if that's your target market go out and do surveys or go out and test things and then come back and put all the pieces into this so that this is based on actual research so um, just for now though stick stick with me because we're um, just doing this off the back of um, my thinking on this and then I'm, I actually just want to show you how you can use this to create good content and I'll actually map this back to what Volkswagen is actually posting about on their global channel um, within the month of September okay so the brand has you know fun colors for all of the the Golf GTI it, you know it may or may not come with a sunroof let's say that their brand value is their fun or to be playful um, they've got small size cars which are perfect for city driving so you just kind of write little pieces about the brand or the product okay in the market uh, a lot of the other car brands are posting about their new owners you know uh, when you get the shiny big bow from from the dealer and they're posting that on their Instagram channels. They're featuring, they're showing the features of each car and they're displaying that in video. Uh, they're also heavy on Instagram among other competitors. And they've got a 25 to 35 year audience, which is actually younger than it is for their other variants. So that's quite, kind of important when marketing uh, the Golf GTI. They've also got users that engage very heavily with video. They've got heavy social media use and heavy use, especially on Instagram for this audience. Uh, this audience also they follow influencers so that that's very important for the brand to know and this audience also posts about their cars in fun and highly visual ways okay so now that you've mapped that out and given that if this was your brand again you would go and do the research and make sure that this mind map was looking absolutely great you would then take that mind map and pick and choose one thing from every category and turn that into a social post 
Okay, so within the audience here, I've just circled, uh, post about their cars in fun and highly visual way. So that's really important to me. That, that would be something fun that we can play within content. Um, and let's take a focus on small sized car for city driving. Okay, and let's also go heavy Instagram use among competitors. We're gonna copy our competitors. Now, what might this look like? Here's a post from Volkswagen's actual global channel. There it is. So they've they've done a long exposure uh, photography here to give you this kind of this funky and highly visual um, portrayal of their of their car here. It's uh, you know an urban kind of shot. So talking about that city driving is kind of being embedded within that content, and it's also featured on Instagram, which kind of fits with all the competitors. So they're there and um, challenging their competitors and saying that yes, we've got content just like you, and we'll take a piece of of the pie that is the consumer's share of voice. Okay, so next we'll look at another one. So again, high, um, highly visual and fun ways that they post about their car. So we're gonna emulate this as a brand. We're gonna take the value of being fun and to be playful. And we're also gonna kind of try and resonate with 25 to 35 year um, audience, audience members here. So we're gonna use somebody of that age within our post. And this is exactly a post from the global channel again. And if you have a look at the colors that pop out here, I mean, the yellow in your shirt, the blue on the wall, and the red uh, car that they've chosen to, to photograph in this one, it's really fun, it's whimsical, so that's the brand values being um, embedded out the back there, and they are trying to align with that younger audience. And this is an actual real post, and we've been able to map what uh, the pieces were from the BMA analysis, and would have been able to create very similar content to what's actually visible on the Volkswagen channel. Okay, and a final one here, let's take that brand value of being fun and to be playful. Okay, and let's take that they engage with video. So we haven't seen a video yet on their channel. Surely they're posting videos. And we've also got that you'd like to follow influencers. So let's see something from the global channel that maybe resonates with this. And um, here's what we might have come up with. Great, so that... That video there is just something that the Volkswagen Global Channel has come up that come up with that allows them to be fun and playful. It's again mapping to that 20 to 35 year audience. They're, they're using video in fun ways. I mean, this, this idea of a post could have easily have been an image post, but you know, the fact they've turned this into a, into a video and let's say for argument's sake that they've used an influencer here and they've been able to tag them and borrow their influence, then this would be a great piece of content. And by using this analysis, we could honestly keep going here and keep circling different things and then turning that into very different posts and have endless content for the brand that it would actually speak back to what the brand actually wanted to share you know did they want to share that they're valuable and fun uh, sorry their brand value is is fun and playful or did they want to share that their cars are are small and great for city driving because you can zip around the streets or do they want to share that their brand comes in fun colors or that the golf gti can hit a certain top speed or that they've got a sunroof whatever it is content allows you to do that and this kind of an analysis allows you to build that content without having to sit there and think okay what is the content going to be and is this content going to be valuable in terms of being strategically placed for the brand and that's exactly how you get to building social media content and that's all the sneak peeks I have from my MBA lecture uh, to the University of Sydney in 2019. You can get the full lecture if you go to the link www.go.insideoutdigital.com.au forward slash optim. That's where you can just pop in your email there and I will send you the, the lecture to watch. You can watch it in full and grab these three insights and so many more insights in the 45 minute uh, lecture that it is. So enjoy that one there. And as always, uh, Cheers to your social media success and have a great day. I'm Lauren and it's goodbye for now, but I'll see you in the next episode. This podcast is a production of Inside Out Digital. For more on Inside Out Digital, well, you know what to do. Please like, subscribe and share this podcast if you loved it. And we'll see you in the next episode. Bye for now and cheers to your success.